Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father, from our Lord and Savior Jesus, who is the Christ. Amen. Every one of us likes to feel good about what we've done. It's part of being made in the image of God, and at the end of each day of creation, he looked around at what he had done and said, it's good. I kind of want to have that feeling here very soon because yesterday a grandson and I went to the storage unit and got out all of the many Christmas boxes of decorations. So many that we had to have two vehicles. You see, we've downsized in our retirement. We bought a smaller house, and now we get to decide what we keep and what we don't use, hopefully give away, and we want to feel good about it. You, you put up your Christmas decorations, you know, it kind of makes you feel good. You take them down and you go, oh, man, the house is so much bigger. Yeah. <laughs> you know, if you plant a garden, you know, and you want, you want to have good produce come out of that garden. If you, uh, you know, fix up your yard and do a, you know, a lot of work and make your house look good, you want it to, you know, make a difference. A, a, want it to look pretty. If you, uh, uh, like me, you know, and uh, you work on cars some, I did a lot of that, put myself through college, actually uh, working in machine shops and working on cars. You want them to run after you get done, right? You want them to make sure that they, they're good and reliable, you know. <laughs> if you quilt. You want it to not only be a warm quilt, but you really like it when somebody else notices the stitching and how you tied it and all of that sort of thing. You know, it's a nice feeling. It's that, it's that God feeling. It's a good feeling. It's a, it's a first uh, Gen a Genesis chapter 1 feeling when God looked around and said it was good. Remember, you're made in his image. Everybody likes to know they're doing a good job. But when it comes down to it, how do you know you've been good enough? Especially when it comes to things of faith. You might have some questions. <laughs> Next. Bio, please. Mm -hmm. Some lying, some stealing, and some acts of kindness here and there. I tried to live a good life. Well, let's see how good. This way. Next. Bio, please. Okay, I admit it. I did a lot of bad things. Yes, I see. But I've done good things, too, you know, to offset the bad things. Like, one time, I cheated on a test, but then I cleaned up trash in the park. Mm-hmm. That should balance out, right? Let's find out. This way. That should have balanced out, right? It should have balanced out. Next. Bio, please. Impressive. Oh, yeah. I devoted my entire life to make this world a better place. I dug wells in Africa. I donated blood every month. And I ran an orphanage in India. I mean, I just wish I could have done more. Mm-hmm. And is this your subscription? I only read the articles. I only read the articles. Next. My mom goes to church. Was baptized as a baby? Take American Express, right? Next. File, please. Whoa. Somebody's been busy. Well, let's get this over with. Sorry, um, I didn't know he was with you. 
Okay, step on the scale. Not you. Him. Hey, wait a minute. That is totally not fair. That's why it's called Grace. Next. See, this text is often misunderstood. Sounds like we earn heaven. Do all these good things. You do this and you do that and, you know, so come into the kingdom. You know, somebody could say, okay, God, I got it. I got it. God's just one more to do on my list. You know, you gotta because he's God after all. Goodness. I'll put on my church face and smile and say everything's fine even when it's not. And you end up going out empty, maybe a little disappointed. When you get in your car, you might even be a little angry. You see, sin creeps in because we're self-centered. And somebody might say to themselves, I know nobody here, but there might have been one in the first service. I thought church was the one place I could go and be myself, and people would care about me. I must be on my own. And more sin creeps in, and more sin, and the heart becomes hard. But a careful reading of the text, a little bit of a stepping back, a slower reading, if you will, helps us to understand. Here's the scene. It's the last day. Jesus is coming back with all his angels, all his glory. And what happens first? All people who have ever lived from all time are there at this scene. And the sheep and the goats get separated, the believers and the unbelievers, the yielded people and the independent people. Now, we do that week after week. God, I'm a sinner. I repent. Please forgive me. That's why we come. That's why we build it into our church services at the beginning of the service to recognize we're in God's house and we don't belong here. But because of God's grace, we can be here. We're allowed to be here because his son paid the price for us. He took our sin upon his sinless self and paid our punishment for us. And so we can say, God, not only forgive me, but thank you for sending your son. And then there's a key word that comes in verse 34 of this text. The key word is then. We're in this final judgment scene, the end of the world. Not, this is not so God would know who is sheep and who's a goat he already knows that but so that we would see faith in action in our own lives God gives us understanding through Jesus telling us what is going on here if we take a step back and look at what is going on here, we see that the lifestyle of believers is to care about other people. And the lifestyle of unbelievers is to not care about other people. That's why James can say, I will show you my faith 
by my deeds. Now we understand. And there's another benefit that goes along with this. You see, you don't have to do everything. You don't have to do everything the church does. You don't have to be a braille worker that also quilts, that also um, you know, mops the floors or sets up tables or counts the offering or sets up the altar or cleans the church or plays bells and sings in the choir. And you, know, all, you don't have to do all of those things. You can pick the ones that you're good at, the ones that you're interested in, the ones that you find hey, I've got the talent for that particular thing. And you don't all have to be on the evangelism team, although I recommend that you try it once. Wait a minute, I recommend you have one, first of all. <laughs> but <laughs> You see, we have the freedom to serve God based on our talents and gifts and interests to be able to serve Him in the way that we are gifted. And we can feel good about that. We don't have to do everything. We can do the things that touch our hearts. The Holy Spirit has placed within us those things that we care about. You see, there's no one right way to serve God. There are many ways, and we get a list in this text of it. How do you help other people? It's, God is diverse. And so are his people. And so are his gifts to his people. So there's a lot of ways that if you're involved in something that's good and helping other people, you are living the lifestyle he wants you to live. If you're not involved, let the Holy Spirit say, here's a way that you could help. Let the Holy Spirit change your heart to not be so Texan but rather Christian as one of my professors at the seminary used to say we're followers of Christ so we are Christians and we want to do what God has called us to do and we have a way of understanding what is that it's all about caring for other people any one of those ways is good you can do it on an occasional basis or you can do it as a lifetime devotion all of that is okay there are times in your life where you may want to be involved in children's ministries and there are times when your knees don't work so good anymore and you're over with children's ministries maybe you should help with something else you know I, that's understandable that's okay and even if your knees don't work so good hey kids ministry is still fun What's the key? What is it if we back up to this text and we see what's the difference between the sheep and the goats? The difference is the lifestyle was serving others. What was Jesus' lifestyle? For years he went around and did what? Raised the dead, healed the sick, and taught. And that's what he asked his people to do as well showing God's kind of love like Jesus did when he walked this earth so check yourself how are you serving how are you serving others is your heart like Jesus to care about other people You remember the kids' game, hide-and-seek? Some guys still do that on the weekends. You know, honey, mow the lawn. Oh, yeah, never mind. The, uh, <laughs> but the kids' game, hide-and-seek. The person that's it counts while everybody else goes and hides. Okay? And when that person gets to whatever the number is, usually a hundred. Ready or not, here I come. What's the one thing you can't change about that game? Is the count. The count has to happen. 
Where do you want him to find you when he comes? Because he is coming. May God have the glory. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which passes all human understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. Amen. Amen. <clears throat>